All right. What's going on, WMAP Radio? It's Capriana. So I have a really great guest coming up today. His name is Larry Ray Harden. He's a retired DEA special agent, private investigator, um, adjunct professor, and author of the book, Fighting My Greatest Enemy and Path of the Devil. So with us today, we have Larry Ray Harden. Larry, what's going on? Hey, thank you very much for having me. Of I'm course. About this 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know, I've I've had a lot of people come on the show before, but I, you know, you have done a number of different things from the normal person I, that I usually get on here. You know, we get a lot of authors, musicians, but I mean, I've never had a retired DEA special agent, private investigator. I mean, and you're an author. So why don't you give us a background about yourself? Because I know if I'm wondering, I'm sure a lot of people that are just tuning in right now, they're probably wondering who Larry Ray Harden really is, too. Exactly. Thank you, ma'am. I, I have to mention Jeff Pierce, Randy Turkeson, and uh, Diane DeMille. Uh, Jeff and Randy are the PIs. They're the one that pushed me really hard to, uh, to write a case about the desert, uh, which is called Path of the Devil, Camino, uh, Camino Diablo. It's doing very well among the Spanish community. It's, uh, it's a true story. These two guys pushed me really hard, uh, and I told them I didn't want to do this because I spend you know, 24 years of chasing bad guys, and I'm ready to retire to do something else. Mm -hmm. But I did it, and I didn't realize the results, the feedback that we're getting on the book. And uh, and with Diane DeMille, with her help in marketing, it's uh, it's moving forward. Uh, my background, I'm from Kentucky. I grew up uh, on the creeks. When I say creeks, we're talking <laughs> rivers. And as a boy, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Southern Baptist, Catholic, baptized in a creek. Uh, and that's what happened to the second book. Uh, fighting my greatest enemy, myself, Confian in Dios. Uh, when I was in Spain working with the military, teaching criminal justice and helping out with the students, I was invited to a, a TV show there, a Spanish TV show. And uh, it went for about an hour. It was, it was, the results were just incredible. Uh, I think both books are going to do very, very well among the Spanish community, uh, whether it's down in Mexico, which I spend... Back and forth, I worked in Mexico for about six and a half years, more or less. Spent about three years in Colombia. I've been around, and uh, when I know, when I say fighting my greatest enemy myself, it is true. Each one of us fight every day with those crazy thoughts. Uh, we wonder why this will happen, or why did I say this? Mm -hmm. uh, path with the devil. Uh, believe it or not, I took that from a from a name of a mountain, uh, which the Spanish priest called the mountain Camino Diablo as they came up from Mexico into Arizona, and then they entered uh, the Mission Church in California. But then I realized later on, the path of the devil, it's not so much about the devil. Uh -huh. uh, it's, it's, it's the devil, but it's at the same time, it's not about the mountain. It's more or less about the path that we take in our lives. And uh, it took me many years to realize this, that there is uh, some goodness out there. I've seen a lot of bad things in my 24 years, lost death of some great buddies, victims of narcotics, whether it's in Baltimore or, uh, or whatever. Drugs or alcohol, uh, it can be evil in the wrong, in the wrong mind. Mm -hmm. And so the path of the devil, I, I did uh, uh, with these two guys. And uh, I think another thing that really helped in a way is that I started volunteer work with hospice. Mm -hmm. And wow. uh, with hospice, I focus on, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would definitely, I'd rather chase bad guys all day long. Right. And instead, sitting there and listen to someone, they're getting, they're dying. They're mm -hmm. going to leave. And they're so open with themselves. I mean, it's just incredible uh, in their experience with what they're experiencing and, and how they died. And uh, I think most of us take that for granted until we take our last breath or before we take our last breath. Yeah. Wow. So, so how did uh, that experience come into play with the path of the devil? Bad experience is one of my first search warrants as a young young man, mm -hmm. uh, hitting Los Angeles, uh, enter a house and see a wall that is all black, candles are burning, there's blood. It's usually blood from a woman, you know, uh, mm -hmm. so on, or they mix it with an animal. And where I looked up and asked, uh, my faith, you know, where are you? And it took me a lot of years, a struggle. It's a spiritual journey, what it is. Mm -hmm. uh, am I a good guy? There's no way in the world I'm a good guy. Have I seen a lot have I participated in some bad things? Yes, I have. When I say bad things, it was to survive. Mm -hmm. Because there is no rule book when someone's getting ready to kill you or hurt you. 
You know, it's called survivor, survival. There is a thing that I do teach. Uh, it's called violence on violence. For example, you, I never met you. Mm-hmm. Uh, you sound like a very young person. <laughs> Probably, mm-hmm. I hope so. <laughs> Sound like it. Yes, but you have to you have to be on guard, and when someone comes up, even just to ask you something, that's when you have to be alert, extremely very alert. Mm-hmm. And uh, and when it happens, it's called violence on violence. Uh, in other words, everything is out the window except everything you learn. And, mm-hmm. uh, so I'm sure a lot of these experiences that you went through, I mean, that's different from you know having a desk job. How can you say? Um, how would you say that these experience, these experiences at a young age? I mean, when when did you um, actually become a DEA? Did you start off by being a cop at first? I was a correctional officer, mm-hmm. uh, working with the adjudication of uh, illegal aliens. And that before that was federal prison, as a correctional officer. And before that, I was in the military, and most of it uh, was worth uh, working with the Marines. I was in the Navy, but I was assigned to the Marines. Wow. Uh, as a chaplain's assistant, not a chaplain, but assistant. Mm-hmm. And uh, but when I got into it, it was 33 years old. I thought I knew a lot about life, but when I started working the streets, and by the way, man, the streets was my life. Mm-hmm. I I tried the desk job, I was uh, promoted, and I was demoted quickly because I didn't want to sit behind the desk. Right. My office was the streets, whether it's Greyhound bus station or train stations, or uh, you know at the international airport airports. I love working with people. I love targeting bad guys. Exactly. Uh, I loved. Uh, I just love the work, uh, and I believe my faith. I realized that it took me a lot of years that that there's a reason why I'm there. And uh, but the whole, the both books, ma'am, they come down to corruption. People say, "Well, Larry, why do you want to talk about med school or Columbia been corrupted?" The problem is when I talk about it, it's it's the way of life there. Right. Uh, it's, it's old. It's, it's been going on. The middle class doesn't really exist anymore in those countries. So you have the, the people at the top and the people that are on the bottom. Those are the simple, mm-hmm. awesome, great people uh, that you meet. The people at the top become greed, fighting my greatest enemy, myself, because money, uh, children. Oh, yeah, I've seen so much of that. I've uh, been abused by the cartels. But it's not about that. It's about our country, your country my country. I was dealing with so much corruption uh, among uh, uh, bad cops. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a tremendous amount of a lot of good people of that are law enforcement. But ma'am, there's those two or three that have access to everything. When I say that, I'm talking about our computers. In other words, when I was targeting the border, some bad guys, uh, there would be certain people who would know all they have to do is look into their system because we all have to communicate with each other. Mm-hmm. And it's need to know. And uh, but I was fighting a battle. Two friends of mine were killed by a corrupted cop. It's in the book. It's all documented. And, uh, and, uh, and a corrupted cop went to my uh, to the, uh, the United States Attorney of the city, the city attorney, and threatened their lives. That's all documented. And how FBI targeted uh, Jeff Pierce because they were coming after me uh, until I was transferred to Bogota, Colombia. And once I got to Bogota, it was incredible, a beautiful country. And it wasn't so much, it was the working at the American Embassy. Right. It's extremely, very, very political. Uh, it's not so much the job, it's, it's what you say and how you behave in a very political manner. And that's why I want to say on your national TV that this commander-in-chief that we have, I'm not, listen, uh, I'm telling you, he read the, I don't know if he read the book, but I sent him the book, mm-hmm. uh, and he gave me a reply back. He's different. He's a guy that shoots from the hip and tells it like it is. You're talking to a guy here that does the same thing. I tell you the truth. And whether, whatever happens, it happens. But I, I think I feel that I'm obligated to tell the American people the truth in these two books. Even Washington, D.C., DEA headquarters, okay, I had to get them to review the books because it is a non-fictional book. I'm not talking about someone jumping off the moon, you know, landing on Mars, okay? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about... Uh, a non-fiction true story about a little girl, okay? No hair, it's on her, but yes, she's out there, okay? And she's on the streets. Uh, prostitutions, you know, people that work in the streets that I dealt with, we're all in this world together, and the streets was my, was my office. The homeless people, majority of the homeless people I worked with were, were some of my best sources. 
And, uh, but you have to be careful, you bet, because they're struggling with their thoughts and their mind. That's why you look at someone on the streets and they're talking out loud, because that's the only friend that he has. That's the only friend he has is, the, is his thoughts. And a lot of his thoughts are crazy, okay? Because in the world we can't accept that, mm-hmm. you know? But yet we do. You, I, we're all thinking all the time. I guarantee sometimes when you're alone in the bathroom or wherever you are, you're probably talking, saying things out loud. You know, right. and, uh, but some people can't control that. And, um, yeah. But those were my people. So we talked about the path of the devil, and uh, I understand that your most recent book, it's called Fighting My Greatest Enemy. I understand that's more of a journalistic book. Yes, it is. It's a spiritual. I, I realize it's a spiritual journey. So what, in, in, in prayer, man. Mm-hmm. What was the yeah. difference between writing Path of the Devil to Fighting My Greatest Enemy? You know, how different uh, was it writing a book like this? Uh, the first book, I found it, well, here, your audience, and you've got to kind of realize one song. Mm-hmm. I, write, I, I wrote these books, but I can't read them without, <laughs> I'm 65 years old, and I can't even read my own book without breaking down, without it crying about killing my dog when I was 12 years old with my, my dad took my Christmas shotgun and he blew my dog's brains out, okay? Mm-hmm. Because why? Because he tastes blood. That's living in the country, living out in the creeks. When an animal kills, tastes blood, same with a human being. It's a same, I experience that. That's why people can kill us so easy because once they taste or rape a woman or, or molest a child, okay, we send them to prison and you know what? Most of these people, with our laws now, whether it's California or whatever, you know, they're, they're beginning to be very, very relaxed. And when they come out, majority of them, you know, some do well and some don't. But now they know how to beat the system. They know how to work the system. We are just about almost out of time. I feel like I can, you know, still continue asking you questions for, I, I mean, like. Well, I want you to. Yeah. I want you to. <laughs> um, but we yeah. are just about out of time. So, you know, guys, if you're just tuning in right now, we have Larry Ray Harden on the phone with us. He's a retired DEA and special agent, private investigator, and now he's an author of the two books, Path of the Devil, and his most recent book called Fighting My Greatest Enemy. Um, I mean, he really gave some heartfelt um, events that took place in his life and you know now he's written two incredible books um, Larry what would be a good way for us to find more information about you and where will we be able to get a hand on a copy of your book hey, it's in bookstores I'm doing a lot of Barnes & Noble now uh, Diane DeMille she's the one that if you can go through her uh, she's listed there in the book uh, uh, you can get it at Amazon Lighthouse the, uh, my last book Fighting my greatest enemy, myself, that is an Indian prayer that I took. It's beautiful. And you're going to see me talk about why the cross and the dove. Have I experienced the devil? 65 years old. Yes, I have. And you have too without realizing. We all have. But there is a God. There is truly, truly a God. Uh, Jesus Christ, I'm not preaching. I'm not a religious. Yeah. I'm just telling you that he knocked me to my knees. It's an awesome experience. It haunts me for the rest of my life. When I say hard, it's a beautiful way. Uh, you know, I enjoy talking to you. I, I really have. <laughs> yeah, and, uh, and you know, I, I want to. I want to take them uh, take a minute um, out of you know this interview to say you know we're called world's most amazing people for a reason you know we tend to get the world's most amazing people on our station and you Larry you're definitely one of those people so I want to say thank you so much for you know coming on here and you know opening up your heart and you know giving us uh, a little insight to your life and what you endured I mean it's really you know truly so remarkable you know everything that you've done I mean uh, being a retired DEA special agent private investigator author, um, a now author of two books, Path of the, of the Devil and Fighting My Greatest Enemy. I mean, you're doing really incredible things and you should definitely be really proud of yourself and the person that you've become. So Larry, I want to say thank you so much for coming on WMAP Radio and I hope you do have a great weekend now, okay? Yeah, you're very nice in your staff. Thank you for giving thank me you. a chance to, to tell the truth. Thank of you, course. man. Thank you. Take care now. Bye-bye.
Wow, that was a great interview, guys. Uh, if, guys, if you're just tuning in right now, that was Larry Ray Harden. He's a retired DEA special agent, private investigator. I mean, it, the guy has done some amazing things in his life. He's now an author of the two books, Path of the Devil and Fighting My Greatest Enemy. Check those books out. Available on Barnes & Noble. Just about anywhere you can get a hand on a copy of a book. Once again, check him out. Google him. Do whatever you want. His name is Larry Ray Harden.